I grew up in Puerto Rico and I had this fantastic Jewish grandmother I just adored. It was always a privilege to get to go to synagogue with her and uh, very often it would be maybe for a, a celebration or something like that. But my favorite part would be sitting in the worship service and enjoying the liturgy that just would resonate with my soul in a really deep way. However, I was not allowed to pursue my Jewish heritage because I had a Gentile grandmother who didn't really like Jews. After high school, I decided that religion was not relevant to life and proceeded to live accordingly. I was looking for something, not sure what, and thought I'd find it in relationships, or success, or possessions, or experiences. And so I tried marriage, and what that didn't work out I got myself out and got a divorce and began wearing my divorce as a badge of honor. In my career, I worked with one of the major car rental companies and uh, was climbing the corporate ladder and would get promoted, got promoted in Washington, D.C. from one position to another, all areas that women had never held before. And so I was forging ahead as, as a woman in management. Eventually got transferred to Philadelphia with yet another promotion. But what I discovered was with each promotion, after the glory came the bigger headaches. So that's not where it was. I had a home, I was filling it with antiques. I would come home with the next antique, with the next piece of furniture, the next painting to put on the wall. And after a while, I'd get tired of it, things would break, I'd want something else. I was getting deeper and deeper into debt, trying to satisfy my desire for possessions. The same with experiences, whether it was a ski trip or, or traveling or exotic vacations, whatever. Afterwards, it was over. So none of that satisfied. The last place I ever considered looking for that sense of meaning and purpose and happiness and fulfillment was in religion. It was not for me. I thought it was a waste of time. I thought it was irrelevant and senseless. Um, sure, I, I knew people that went to church, but I thought it was a waste. They were wasting their day. They're perfectly good Sunday morning in church. I thought people were, were weak or believing in fairy tales and legends, but it certainly was not for me. Then I met someone who was different. She was exuberant and joyful and intelligent um, and sharp. And she, our conversations counted. She cared about me in a way that I had never experienced in a person before. And she invited me to church. And I thought that was very strange. No one goes to church today. But I found myself going, kicking and screaming the whole way there. I don't want to do this. I don't want to be Christian. I don't know why I'm coming, but I'll try anything once. And my complaint was that I didn't want to be Christian. I wanted to be Jewish, like my Jewish grandmother. So we got to church, and there had to be a thousand people in that congregation, and they all seemed to have that same quality in their life that same joy and exuberance and sense of meaning and purpose in life. And that intrigued me. I subsequently learned that they had something that belonged to me and my people. They had a relationship with God, the creator of the universe, that was something that my Jewish people had. And I wanted that. They, how could Gentiles have it and not me? And so after the service, I started asking Jan, what is this all about? And she explained to me that they have a personal relationship with God and that I could have it too. But I wasn't sure I wanted it. For about six weeks, I, I, I could not get enough of the Bible and the other, the other books that she had given me. I couldn't wait to get home from everything I was doing to devour these uh, the, the Bible and these books. And 
yet I knew it was consuming way too much of my life. I wanted it, but I didn't want it. I was, I had, I had a sense of darkness in my life and there was light out there and I wasn't sure. Sometimes I, I was attracted to it and sometimes I wanted to run from it, but it would not let me alone. I remember hearing the term spiritual battle and I told her, I said to her one day, yes, and I'm the battleground. They're fighting it out in me. I even heard someone quote the mathematician and philosopher Blaise Pascal, there is a God-shaped vacuum in the heart of every person that can be filled by no created thing but only by God the Creator, made known to us through Jesus Christ. And I got to thinking, I have spent 33 years of life stuffing Laura-shaped pegs in a God-shaped hole, and they don't work. They don't fit. I was driving home from a conference that she had taken me to, and I was struggling with the concepts in there. And I heard them, they had talked about fear, and I got to thinking, yes, fear, what am I afraid of? I'm afraid of something. If this is true, I sure don't want to miss it. And if it's not true, what's it hurt to play along with it for a while? And they said that fear is sin. And there's that word that I didn't like again. And that sin came from friendship with Satan. A little red character, pointy tail, pitchfork. Didn't really think I could believe in this guy. But th that God, who I wasn't too sure about either, could do something about it if I prayed. Didn't really understand prayer, although people were talking about it. But I looked through that rainy windshield it was in my car and said, hey, you up there, you're just going to have to tell my old buddy Satan we're not friends anymore. And immediately my car was overcome with, with such a calm, with such a joy and a peace. And I realized that I had come face to face with that missing piece of the puzzle that I was looking for all my life. Happiness, fulfillment, significance, and more than that, love, joy, and peace that I did not know to look for. As I began reading the Bible, I discovered a, a specific passage that was written 2,500 years ago by King Solomon. And it says, meaningless, meaningless, utterly meaningless, everything is meaningless. What does man gain from all his labor at which he toils under the sun? Generations come and generations go, but the earth remains forever. The sun rises and the sun sets and hurries back to where it rises. The wind blows to the south and turns to the north and round and round it goes, ever returning on its course. Exactly how I had been running my life. How hopeless is that? How did this man, 2,500 years ago, know the deepest, darkest secrets of my life that I'd never revealed to anyone else and that I hated to even think about myself? So looking back over the last 30 years since all this took place, I have to say that it began an amazing journey that I could never have scripted for myself. And the best part of it is being able to share with executives and even UN diplomats, this hope and freedom and happiness and fulfillment and significance and meaning that I have found and been able to journey in for the last 30 years.